You're listening to a bonus episode of the Apparelist Podcast, where we talk about high-level topics that are relevant to the decorated apparel community. Tune in monthly for regular episodes and enjoy this special edition. Hello, Apparelist family. You are listening to a bonus episode of our podcast right now. So every now and then we like to bring extra content to help guide your apparel decorating business in the right direction. And today it is all about the theme of buyer beware. Earlier this month, we ran a fantastic comprehensive guide on how to purchase new equipment. And we know so many decorators out there who are in the buying stage. Maybe you're just starting your business and you're looking for equipment to get off the ground. Maybe you're looking to add equipment, whatever, you know, stage you are at. Purchasing equipment is a big decision. And while there are so many things to consider, doubling down on your research into the quality of a machine you want to purchase is almost at the top of the list. Today, we're specifically talking about heat presses and heat applied graphics. And trust me when I say to you that if you opt for the low quality, cheap knockoff, you're going to find yourself in the hot seat. And I don't mean that in the sense of your press will perform up to standards. But if my word doesn't convince you, you're going to want to listen to what this episode's guest has to say on the topic. Ben Robinson is the chief manufacturing officer at Group Stall. I've actually known Ben for quite a number of years. And last year, we even got a chance to catch up at the Stall's DFC facility in Pennsylvania. So Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. You're incredibly knowledgeable. Um, let's just kick things off. Can you share a little bit about your background in the industry, how you got into it, how long you've been working with Stalls, the Hotronics brand, all that good stuff? Yeah, no problem. Sure. Um, believe it or not, it's been around 36 years that I've been in the industry. Um, I started as a young man uh, with another screen printing company that designed specialty equipment that prints on uh, hats. And uh, we actually designed and grew very, very quickly. Um, I did a little bit of sales as well as production in there. We bumped into stalls at the uh, trade show and I saw an opportunity and I've been going strong with uh, stalls uh, for 32 years. Um, I started as a, an assembler, believe it or not, and went all the way up through from production manager to R&D through uh, now I'm group uh, stalls, uh, chief manufacturing officer. And it's been quite a joy. I, I can only imagine um, the things that you have seen along your, your journey, um, the experiences, how you've seen technology grow. Um, I'm sure it's been, been a pretty cool ride. And yeah, it, it is. And I'll tell you while I can jump in there, we yeah. have, seen, we have seen this come full circle to where, you know, we, we the reason that Stahl's Hotronics was invented was because there were inaccurate heat seal machines out there that didn't have quite the heating elements. They had cold spots, uh, un, uh, uneven pressure, and it just on transfers and back in the 80s and 90s, a poor machine provided poor wash results and people understood that Hotronics was better and that's why it was invented. There you go, folks. You got the story right there. Speaking of, of quality of products, there was a need. They saw it. They jumped on it. I love it. So, you know, talking a little bit, maybe along those lines, um, you know, what is the allure of the heat transfer process, the heat applied graphics area? You know, a lot of people love this technology. So what makes this application process so popular within our community? Yeah, so the cool thing about it is I've got to watch it evolve to where it's overtaken most of the decorating choices out there. Um, number one, I would say the ability to be able to personalize any order volume, and that includes one-off customization. Um, so you can't do that with any other type of method without setups and very costly, uh, you know, uh, non-volume methods. Um, and then number two, the, the, the process in itself is a very, very low investment, and there's very little training needed to open a business. So whether you choose to do it on a side hustle or crafting, or you choose to do it on a commercial level, everybody can learn how to do heat printing, and it's a very inexpensive method to do it. It's so true. Um, kind of like what we were saying when we we kicked this episode off is like it can be for the beginners, it can be for the experienced, and everybody in between. I mean that 
in and of itself seems like a pretty big benefit to me. Correct. You started to allude to this when you were talking about the emergence of hotronics, um, you know, the, the heating elements, the unevenness of it, the pressure, all that good stuff. So in your opinion, what makes a good heat press? What features do buyers need to be looking for when it, when they're in the purchasing process? Well, the feature list is endless, but let me try to capture it all. Um, <laughs> it is, it really is. <laughs> the fun part about it is, honestly, we've, we've probably had over 30 patent designs uh, throughout the last three decades. Um, and I could bore you with the details, but because of time, the first thing that I would look for is a company that designs and manufactures and backs up their products that have yeah. decades of credibility. And what I mean that is there's a lot of fly-by-nighters out here. This is what we're talking about. A lot of dupes, a lot of copies. But if I were looking for a press, I would want someone who has a company credibility for decades, not, not hours. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say hours, H-O-U-R-S. But <laughs> second of all, uh, Made in America is very important with us. Um, and I like to say with investment castings, aluminum castings, you know, that are accurate. So when it all boils down to the trinity of heat printing is accurate temperature, time, and pressure controls. Mm -hmm. So if I were going to summarize, I would look for uh, design and made in America, decades of credibility, and the most accurate temperature, time, and pressure controls. And that would summarize how I would shop for a heat press, even if I didn't work here. That's what I would dig into. Yeah. I mean, I, th I feel like we kind of see that across the board. Um you know, even with the emergence of like newer technologies and things like that, you, you see people a lot of times be like, Oh, that one's super cheap. I'm going to save a ton of money, but there's no customer service. They're not getting the support on the customer side. There's no, when something breaks, it's really hard to find a part, things like that. Um, so I think that that point that you make about that and looking for a reliable supplier is so crucial. It is. It's not just the accuracy of the press. It's got to be the experience with the company you're partnering with. And uh, I always allude to the thing. I like to cut wood on the weekends. And, uh, you know, there's all different chainsaw choices and all different types of brands. But I pick one that somebody stands behind because in the event that it does break down, you want to be fixed the next day or um, you want to be able to cut your wood efficiently. And you don't want to have to babysit a, a broken saw because you tried to save a couple bucks. Oh my gosh. So true. And, and, you know, to really drive that point home, I mean, think about all the potential profit you could lose when your equipment's down. I mean, you, you go even a week without stuff and, and you start to be like, Oh man, I can't fulfill these orders. Now I'm have to contract them out. Like it just becomes a big headache. So. It does. And, and, um, the world is built on speed. We know who yeah. put us all there and who we're all copying after, but, <laughs> um, if you don't get it in the next hour or the next day, these days, people will go somewhere else. So you better be prepared to deliver in those time frames, or you'll get passed up. So true. So kind of building on that a little bit. Um, so the buyers out there, they're doing their research. They're looking for companies um, that you know are reputable, all that good stuff. So on the flip side of that, when they're you know looking at the heat press, are, are there any red flags that you know the buyer should be looking at that might indicate, hey, this isn't high quality, like. And we've kind of talked about this, but specifically outlining those big things that will say, hey, maybe you should think twice about purchasing this particular piece of equipment. Well, I would answer this again, because the initial investment is so small uh, to, to purchase and make perfect garments every time. <laughs> Cutting costs in the beginning is only going to cost you in quality prints, uh, mistakes and and all the way down to operator fatigue. If you try to buy a cheaper machine that doesn't have the proper bearings in the handle or in the leverage system itself, you have to stand on top of it. And um, after you do, you know, 144 pieces, the operator has fatigue. So mm -hmm. some of the things that I would be aware of is if you, if you call the company and can get a hold of a live body that can demonstrate this, you're, you're, you're halfway on the right track. If you call and there's nobody there, it tells you right out there what you're dealing with uh, as far as follow-up service. Um, I always research companies that have been OEMs for 30 plus years uh, and that you can get a live body on the phone. Something else, 
as good general practices uh, for buying is number one, your certifications, UL, ULC, and CE. That means that there's a third party certification system there that, that means it's gonna be safe and it's gonna last the time that it should. So you should consider companies that that have you know certifications in your I, choice. Yeah. Right. I I just that's such a a small but important point that you just made because I think maybe especially like th for beginners, like say I'm just ent entering the industry, I may oh. not be aware of that that there is that certification. So I think that's a really powerful point you bring up. It is, and then some of the imports that are coming from offshore that are flooding the, the U.S. market with it. I promise you, they, they don't have certification one. And it's, um, it's <laughs> we always tell everybody we might not be your first press, but we'll be your last. <laughs> and, um, and it's because of all those steps and in, in that investment that we've taken. It doesn't come for nothing, but it gives you peace of mind and, you know, makes you profitable every time. Absolutely. Uh, you, you, we actually started talking about this a little bit, but let's look ahead a little bit. So you've decided, okay, I am just going to purchase the low end, super cheap one. Where's that going to hurt you down the road specifically? Um, looking, you know, far into the future. Okay. You've got the press, you're up and running. You've got this cheap one. Now, where is that going to hurt your business? Well, it's not going to last. Number one, it is not going to last. They're not built to last. They're, they're, you know, you could buy a handheld iron and try to do it yourself too, but you're going to get inaccurate prints. Um, it's not going to last like it should. Um, it possibly could be unsafe for your business and it's going to wear your operator out. So I always like to tell everybody, if you want it the same every time on time, uh, buy a reliable machine. It's, it's, it's not that much more to have peace of mind. Absolutely. And, you know, any other general practices that apparel decorators can follow throughout the buying um, yeah. Um, process? Yeah, uh, I would consider companies that manufacture it all. Nobody wants to get on the phone and make four different phone calls. And what I mean by that is if you find a company that manufactures not only the pencils, but the pencil sharpeners, um, rather than to cherry pick certain products, uh, those companies will be inclined to help you through the whole process because they own the transfer method. Well, whether you're doing CAD cut or you're doing transfers or heat transfer vinyl, um, if you buy it where you get your machine, they'll be inclined to help you. Where if you would deal business with somebody that only sells a machine but doesn't sell, say, hot split transfers or DTF, they're all going to tell you, go talk to your transfer manufacturer and then the transfer manufacturer is going to say, why don't you go talk to the heat press manufacturer? A one-stop shop will never let you fail. They'll own up to the entire process. And that, that would be most important to me. You've mentioned this a couple of times, this idea of um, customer service. This seems to be a huge point that, again, we need to emphasize. Um, in your opinion, you've already talked about, okay, get get a live body on the phone. Um, in terms of like that customer service aspect, what are, you know, are there questions that decorators should be asking these people? Um, should they be looking for like local regional sales reps? You know, what are the things in the customer service department that might help aid in this process? Well, we found in today's demographics, let's be honest, there are people that are coming right out of high school that are doing this as a side hustle all the way to the seasoned veterans and whether you're craft through commercial um, you, we have a method that we use. You can get online. There's a ticketing system that enables to do question answer, or there's also 800 numbers that are unlimited to you that once you purchase the machine service after the sale is super, super important. And then I'll tell you another giant thing that stalls is really big on is the education. There is a library of videos that will show you what to use when and how to price, you know, how to make profit. It's not just the machine and the application and the technology. It's it's about the business aspect of how do I make money at this and how, where do I source my garments? There are things in place like that with reputable companies that have been open for decades. It's amazing how circular it is to me because you kind of think about it. Okay, you buy this really good high quality equipment, but 
to your point, if you don't know how to use it or make money at your business, is it going to be good? You know? So like this, this circular pattern that I'm seeing is like, the, it's a whole package. It is. What I'm getting is like, you, yeah. you, you have to look for the package. Yeah. You have to be just, it's just as important to know who your market is, where, where are you going to get your garments? How are you going to turn it just in time? How do you price the product so that you're competitive and uh, offering all the newest decorations out there? They're ever changing. And I always like to tell everybody, you know, our machine will eat up anything that you put through it. You just got to be when it's a fad, it's a fad. Or if it's, you know, if it's the new thing, be ready to change on a dime because you can't sit still as a company, not in today's market. Yep. Thank, thanks to uh, what you mentioned earlier, these big giants um, creating a very fast paced world mm -hmm. for us. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Um, and, and so that's also something that I think plays a huge role in this sort of buyer beware market is like you said, technology changes very quickly. Um, and so it can be very easy to give it, give it into the temptation the allure of like, oh, this is new technology. It's so sweet. I'm just going to buy it without even thinking. Um, and we see a lot of that too. And it's like, okay, think through this process first. Don't just buy the first piece of equipment you happen to Google or happen to find on one of these fast supplier websites. <laughs> so to Correct. Say. No, I, I'm in total agreement. I really don't have a comment beyond, um, you know, some people spend their money on keyword ad searches to come to the top. And some people spend their money on permanent investment in engineering. Uh, we'd like to do a little of both, but uh, I can promise you when it comes to accuracy, ease of use, longevity, quality, helping you after the sale through everything, um, that's what we pride ourselves in. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you said it best. Customers, everyone out there listening to this, do your research. It, it boils down to doing your research, working with reputable companies, asking the questions, going to sites like Saul's TV, educating yourself, you know, attending trade shows, attending these conferences, make it the whole package. Because if you buy a cheap piece of equipment, it, it can tank your business ultimately. So, um, Ben, thank you so much for joining us where, okay. So you mentioned Saul's TV as a great like education platform. Where else can decorators go to maybe connect with you? Um, where would you send them to ask more questions? Any specific websites? Where should they go? Well, any of the stalls websites, uh, obviously, we have many, many, many different entities. Uh, Transfer Express, uh, you have Stalls ID out of Michigan. But just to give you today, next week, half of our crew will be in Atlantic City at a, at a at an print sportswear show. Uh, the other half of our crew will be in Amsterdam at uh, a FESPA show. So stalls is worldwide. And if you, if you, if you just, you know, type in stalls, you'll be able to find the nearest uh, entity near you. And whether that means stalls UK or stalls Europe, um, we have a common set of vision, mission, and values worldwide. And um, it's, it's important to us that we say the same thing to all of our customers, no matter where you're from. I love that. So there you have it, folks, worldwide. So it's not an excuse. If you're not here in the States with us, you can still connect. You can still educate yourself. And of course, you can visit apparelist.com. Um, we actually have several podcasts that feature various folks from stalls. Carlene Gray has joined us. Josh Ellsworth has joined us. These are topics that you must listen to. Again, educate yourselves. Do your due diligence set yourself up for success. Ben Robinson, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate the time you gave me today.